Wow. I guess there are times when lightning can strike twice in six months. Hey everyone, it's Don G. Corleone here, and I am here with a brand new movie review, and this movie review is going to be for a horror film that just came out this weekend today, on September 16th, and is actually a prequel to a film that was just released earlier this year, around March 2022, and um, it's for another film directed by Ty West. Ty West also directed its predecessor, technically the film that's set after this one. I had reviewed the earlier film as well, and I'm already reviewing the prequel film, and that's going to be for this week's Pearl, the prequel to X, aka the origin story of the villainess from X. Yeah, also directed by Ty West. So what's the plot of this? Well, set in 1918, trapped on our family's isolated farm, Primos tend to her alien father under the bitter and overbearing watch of her devout mother. Listening for a glamorous slave like she's saying seen in the movies, Pearl finds her ambitions, temptations, and repressions all colliding in this origin story of X's iconic villain. So yeah. So how was this film made? Well, Ty West began writing a script for the prequel film during production on X. The filmmaker stated that the prequel project had developed from a story he had collaborated on with Mia Goth, and that he had seen it either as becoming a potential film, or simply serving as a backstory for Goth's role as Pearl in the first movie. After the onset of the coronavirus pandemic, seeing its impact on the cinema industry, West stated that he had been inspired to continue working and decided to begin production of the prequel immediately after wrapping on the previous installment. West stated that he had pitched his idea of a new franchise to 8 4 and had been surprised when they greenlit his projects. The filmmaker stated that he intends each film to have its own distinct style and genre of horror. Describing his approach to each movie, he stated that X was heavily influenced to the, by the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise and by the works of Mario Barra, which explored how the rise of independent filmmaking affected society. While Pearl would be a melodrama meets the technically colored style of Mary Poppins and The Wizard of Oz. Made as a demented Disney movie, and based on the works of Douglas Sirk, and will explore how Hollywood filmmaking influenced people. West stated that he intends to continue his trend of exploring diverse styles and genre in future installments, and this movie was a joint venture production between 8 to 4 and Little Lamb Productions. And with the release of the first publicity poster, it was announced that West would once again serve as a film editor alongside his other production roles that Elliot Rocky would return as cinematographer, and that Tyler Bates and Tim Williams would serve as co-composers of the film's score. So after Pearl was shot back-to-back -back with X, we all know X was released March 2022, gained critical acclaim, and it was decently profitable at the box office for an eight, with $14 million on a $1 million budget. And now Pearl has been released today but it had its world premiere of the 79th Venice International Film Festival on September 3rd, 2022, and has been released in theaters in the United States today on September 16th, 2022 by A24. Much like X six months ago earlier this year, this movie also received critical acclaim from critics, although a tad bit lower than its predecessor. As for my reaction, well, I gotta say, I think this has to be my third favorite horror film of 2022, behind its predecessor X and June's Black Phone. For a prequel and one that could be released six months apart from the first installment, this really proved that lightning can strike twice in six month gaps. There is times like with Kill Bill and Back to the Future 2 and 3 where it does work with film goers, and times like with Matrix 2 and 3, which I still like guys, but this is an example of when it doesn't really work, where most people don't tolerate it. In fact, you know how I call 
You know how they call X a way better reboot styled sequel to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre than that 2022 shitty Netflix film as I like to call the worst horror movie this year so far? I can call this movie somewhat of a way better prequel to the 1974 original TCM movie than 2017's cheap, cheap Devil's Rejects knockoff Leatherface. It's so crazy how they've already confirmed a direct sequel to X called Max Inch, Max Triple X In. Although I hope they give that one a bit of time before rushing it. Meek Goth especially turns in an Oscar worthy performance as the lead, bringing a devastating sense of humanity to, and for all intents and purposes, a despicable character. Also worthy of praise is Tandy Wright, who played a trapped and unsupported mother that keeps Pearl underneath her thumb. As the movie unfolds, the growing sense of tension between the two can make anybody who grew up with strict parents' stomach turn. Without going to any further plot details, the reason why I'm one of the reasons I still go to theaters is to try and discover and experience films like this on the big screen and give the theaters the support they deserve. Everything is impeccably shot, down to the color palette that emulates many classic Technicolor movies. The script is also tight and well written. Mia Goth co-wrote the screenplay this time around even, and it's clear she understands the character profoundly. Her performance is terrifying, and on a dime she's able to flip from sweet and innocent to bloodthirsty and vengeful to remorseful and empathetic all within the same scene sometimes even within the same shot. It is no hyperbole. It's one of the best lead performances I've ever seen in the genre. In fact, I think Mia Goth might go on to be one of the best screen queens of our generation so far. Of the 2020s, anyways. Might be, uh, might be just about to be joining the league with all the other screen queens of horror. So, I think this probably has to be my favorite performance from an actress of this year. Like, when the protagonist of your story is a murdering psychopath, obviously there is a risk of alienating the audience. But that never happened because the script keeps all of Pearl's actions rooted in the, in the festering grudge that she holds towards her unfulfilling responsibilities and the subjectively monstrous life that she feels anchored to. Pearl remains a sympathetic character because she is written as what a lot of us would become if we snapped and acted on every thought we had in our minds. But Brennan is a technicolor slasher of sorts. Pearl is, in truth, more of a twisted psychological family drama and a character studying a deeply sad outsider who feels her life is slipping away from her, her dreams, desires, and impulses out of reach due to her circumstances. The steam was tapped upon an X, which showed the character at the end of her life, and its exploration of where she came from is immense and its point that by turns. The film was noticeably effective because this existential theme is one that is endemic to being a human, a fear, a fear for many that, no matter where we are in our lives, is ever present in all of the what ifs, the morning of lost time, and even worse, the possibility that we are in fact where kind of we belong. Now you know how like X was a straight up slasher movie the whole time, the whole entire way through. This one is kind of more of a drama style psychological thriller, in a way. So Pearl doesn't really edge into the slasher territory until its third act. So, and most of the movie, in general as a whole, is just a visual feast, garishly colorful, and tipping its hat to a number of films, like The Wizard of Oz is the obvious cornerstone, but there are visual symbolic nonsense of repulsion, and even more heavily, Frederick Frittle's obscure farm set acts, another film that falls like a mis- But apparently, from what, from what I've heard, it's another film that falls a young woman carrying fur and from grandfather on a royal farm. As with X, like Wes uses these influences smartly without bro beating the audience or pushing the film's content over the edge into pure pastiche, and the film downshifts in its denouement in a way that is unexpectedly touching, despite all the spit blood and entrails. Ty like employs a unique directing choice with this movie. He uses a self-described technicolor inspired style, and due to this color swap with an almost unnatural ethernal grow, one that serves the time period well. The colors are so overly saturated to depict the idealistic viewpoint of America that many had during the time. The visual decisions contrast nicely against the movie's darker subject matter. Nothing like, nothing says American Dream in this movie like crimson red blood splashing against our protagonist's face against the backdrop of baby blue skies and lush green, gla green grass. And, but however, are there bad qualities with the movie? Yes, there are some bad qualities. Many who really liked X will probably find themselves a bit disappointed with this prequel. 
It just, as this movie doesn't really have or come close to reaching the levels of shock and intensity that the former had. In fact, like I said before, Pearl is not really a horror film at all, or even a slasher, but more of a slow paced descent into mass character study that uses its brutal violence sparingly, and it's a great character study at that. But it is kind of branded into, branded as a technical slasher of sorts. Pearl and Truth is kind of more of a twisted psychological family drama, and a character study of a deeply sad outsider who fears her life is slipping away from her, her dreams, desires, and it pulses out of reach due to her circumstances. The theme is tapped upon in X, which showed the character at the end of her life, and its exploration where she came from is demented and pointed out by turns. The film is notably effective because this existential theme is the one that is endemic to being a human. I fear for many that, no matter where we are in our lives, is ever present. All the what ifs, the morning of lost time, and even worse, the possibility that where we are is in fact where we belong. Pearl does indeed judge just slasher territory in its third act, though, like I've said. The film as a whole has a visual. But yeah. Like I've already said. So, yeah. If you are going to see this, as a little heads up, and if you just want to see the violence, you may be slightly disappointed. This movie is not even anywhere as violent as X. For all you gore hounds, there's only a handful of kills like near around the final third of the film, and they're not very gory or creative. There's none to occur to mean spiritedness still cuts through though, as Pearl's one track mind causes her to lose all empathy towards those who cross her path. And like Pearl's determined, and she assures that we know it, and we'll know it once she sees her stab, slice, dice, and smother anyone who stands in her way. The creativity of X in terms of kills isn't here. But I am particularly in mind that since the story was much stronger all around, any more impact to the violence once it finally does happen. So yeah, in short guys, which one did I like better? This movie or X? I'm gonna have to say X. I liked X better. I feel like X was a bit better written, more intense. This one's kind of more like a psychological drama. But however, in the end though, Pearl's still just as good though, but I like X slightly better. But it is the perfect example of a rare horror prequel actually being just as good as the first installment of the franchise. And it's worth seeing if you still love X or... Anyways, but if you didn't like X, then you're probably not going to like this. So don't expect much. If you, if you hated X, don't expect this to be better. But anyway, that's it for my view of Pearl, and if you're wondering how I'm going to rank Pearl, here's how I'm going to rank this movie. So overall, if you want to see a perfect backstory of the main antagonist from X, then I would easily go see this and then buy it, add it to your collection for sure. And if you're wondering how I'm going to rank Pearl, I am going to give Pearl an 8 out of 10. And there you go. That wraps up my review for Pearl, so I really hope Maxine can, when that comes out, can keep this going and we might have one of the best horch if it still has the same well direction if ty west can still keep this up and still keep up the good direction he added with these two movies we may just have one of the best horror trilogies in a very long time so i really hope fingers crossed he can keep it up for maxine when it finally decides to come out and when it starts to get filmed but I can't wait for that. I can't wait to see how that goes. But yeah, until then, guys, that will be it for this review. Thank you all for watching. And if you like this and want to see more, then don't forget to like, subscribe to Don G. Corleone.